And welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to nutritional health resource for all things health and nutrition and diet. 844-236-6010. If you're dealing with a health challenge that you or a loved one needs help with, if you want to get on a good nutritional supplement program, wean yourself off your meds, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us show you how simple and how easy good health can be. How simple and how easy feeling better, no matter what your health challenge is, feeling better can be a couple of moves away, a couple of strategic moves away. Not a lot. The body's not complicated in the, in, in the reversal sense. It might be complicated at the molecular sense, the cellular sense, the way everything interacts with each other, but we don't have to do too much because it's all on automatic. That's really the take-home message here. When I talk about the simplicity of health, I'm really referring to the fact that the body is on automatic. It's on automatic healing. It's on automatic regenerating. It's on automatic stress management. It's on automatic digestion. It's on automatic heartbeat, automatic breathing, automatic everything. And nothing is more automatic than the self-repairing mechanism that occurs at the smallest of levels, at the level of a cell. You know, if you take a pin and you stick it in a cell and you puncture it, almost instantly it repairs itself like a tire, like one of those high-tech tires that repair themselves. The cell will actually repair itself from a puncture almost instantly, automatically. And that same healing system is built into everything in the body. Modern medical model does not want us to know. It doesn't know it itself. And it is very threatened by any messages that are to the contrary. The medical model is tremendously threatened by this idea of reversal. The medical model will put people in jail via its via the, uh, enforcement and legal agencies. People can go to jail. People can lose their livelihoods. People can go to lose their, lose their uh, licenses for pr- uh, promoting the idea that the body heals itself without a doctor, if we know what we're doing. And that's what we're all about on the Bright Side. If you have questions about any of this, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Transdermal C Balm. And also, if you'd like to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please call uh, 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information, or you can sign up, you can purchase products and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we have been talking about the stress hormone cortisol call it stress hormone. That's what everybody calls it, but it's really a stress management hormone, not a stress hormone. When secreted appropriately, when secreted in physiologic small doses, cortisol is actually not a stress causing hormone, but it is actually a, it actually improves our body's ability to handle stress. That's why I call it a stress management hormone. 
And because life is stress, it's really a life management hormone. Incredibly important stuff. Yes, ex chronic exposure to cortisol is behind all health challenges, but that does not marginalize the fact that cortisol is ridiculously important, arguably the most important or one of the most important hormones in the body. It's definitely one of the most important hormones in the body. It protects against oxidation. It's, it's uh, especially at the level of energy production. You know, when you're making energy or when a cell is making energy, there's lots of sparks that fly off. Those, the sparks are what we kind of call oxidation, generally speaking. So when, and how energy is produced in a cell, <laughs> oh my God, that is the single most amazing biochemical chemical process on planet Earth by far and away, how energy is produced in a cell. And uh, in very, uh, inevitably, sparks fly off from that energy production from cascade or energy production chemistry. And cortisol mops up those sparks, which is incredibly important. When you're under stress, you're making more sparks, you're making more energy. Cortisol becomes very, very important as an anti-sparking agent. Cortisol is also a fat breakdown hormone. Helps the body break down fat when secreted appropriately. Think about it. You're running from a saber-toothed tiger. You need all this energy to run from the tiger, lion, whatever you're running from. That's basically what cortisol is. It's a run or fight or flight hormone. So one of the ways it gets energy is by burning fat. It's a fat burning hormone. It stimulates fat burning. In the short run, that's kind of a good thing. It gives you energy. But in the long run, it could be a problem. Especially you get this chronic low level drip, 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 steady baseline, elevated baseline level of cortisol. Some people have it for life. Some people have it from teenagerhood to the, till the day they die. Now, in the short run, this could be not necessarily a bad thing. If you're using, uh, particularly if you're using all that energy, most of us aren't using that energy because most of our cortisol, the vast majority of it, doesn't come from to, because of a, a lion. It comes because of a credit card bill or a bad relationship or a bad job or some kind of inflammatory disease or some kind of chronic inflammation that's going on. That's another thing. Cortisol is an anti-inflammatory. So when you're chronically inflamed, when you're chronically inflamed from attack, inflammation is attack. Inflammation is the way the body responds to attack is what I should say. Inflammation is a response to attack. It's a defensive response. I don't know how many, I know I have to say this every time because we have new listeners and because repetition is reinforcement, but inflammation is a defensive response. And inflammation is behind everything. That means defense is behind everything. That means attack is behind everything. Now, attack can be the wrong thing getting in. The attack can be the right stuff not getting in. That's like an anti-attack, a negative attack. It's a weakening of the, the forces. So there's two directions that infl inflammation can, uh, can be induced from. One is a lack of nutrition. Yes, a lack of nutrition can induce inflammation, especially in the skin. We notice this. Lack of essential fatty acids, lack of fatty vitamins can make the skin much more prone to inflammation and itching and acne and eczema. That's why EFAs are so important for skin issues. They're anti-inflammatory. EFAs... Uh, EFA, essential fatty acids, vitamin C is anti-inflammatory. The B-complex can be anti-inflammatory. Vitamin E and A can be anti-inflammatory. Why? Because they strengthen the body's defenses. So cortisol, stress hormone, is an anti-inflammatory hormone. It's an antioxidant hormone. Not, te not an antioxidant the way other antioxidants. It's a, it helps suppress oxidation, we'll say. Oxidation suppression hormone. It's a stress management hormone. It's a fat burning hormone. Although in the long run, it can be a fat, it can be a, a, a fat gaining hormone. That's because in the short run, your body's burning all that cord, all that fat to get energy. But if we don't use that energy, eventually it gets stored as fat and we get fatter. So in the short run, people who are spiking cortisol or at the beginning stages of cortisol spiking will be really skinny. They can't lose weight. They'll have insomnia. They'll have all the signs of cortisol, elevated cortisol, but they won't get fat. It's only in the later stages you start to gain the weight. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. back 
on the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also purchase products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If you'd like to purchase any of our truth treatment products, go to truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel, truth transdermal C serum, truth transdermal C balm, and our truth omega-6 healing cream. Got a text a couple days ago from a gal, so we should call that Nectar from Heaven, the Omega-6 Healing Cream. And when you put it on, those of you guys who have used it, used it know exactly what I'm talking about. It is incredibly skin softening and moisturizing, but that's not really where it excels. It excels as a healing product for burns and for cuts and for scrapes and post-surgery or pre- and post-surgery to prevent scarring. I actually developed it as an anti-burn product for a guy who had some severe burns. It worked so well, his insurance company ended up paying for it. It's now available to you as Omega-6 Healing Cream, and you can find out all about it and our other truth treatments at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we've been talking about the misunderstood stress management hormone, cortisol. Cortisol's got three major roles. It's a fat breakdown hormone, which in the short term will keep you from gaining weight. You've seen the body types, real, real wiry, skinny, Problems sleeping, jittery, have anxiety, moving around real fast. Those are signs of excessive cortisol in the short term. In the long term, things slow down. You start to gain weight as your blood sugar gets thrown off. So uh, in the long run, cortisol is a fat-inducing weight gain hormone. It's not supposed to be secreted in the long run. It's supposed to be secreted sh- just for emergencies. It's an emergency hormone. The, uh, uh, cortisol is also an, uh, mops up oxidation. I don't want to say it's an antioxidant, but it mops up oxidation. And that means anti, uh, mops up aging. So it's anti-aging in the short term, I suppose you could say. In the short term. And then it's also an anti-inflammatory. That's really where its claim to fame is, is as an anti-inflammatory. It's the basis for uh, its therapeutic effects. Cortisol, prednisone, methyl, uh, methylprednisolone, and dexamethasone, and these steroid-type drugs that mimic cortisol are a mainstay of pharmacology, of, of modern medicine, because of their anti-inflammatory effects. It's your natural Motrin, which tells you a couple things. Number one, it makes a great drug if you can imitate it, and number two... It is going to be secreted in higher amounts when we're inflamed, when we're sick, when we're chronically being attacked. Lowering your cortisol is a question of telling the immune system to stand down, not by forcing it to stand down, but by giving it the raw materials it needs to be strong and keeping the bad stuff out. And, you know, if you have to simplify health, that's pretty much it. Bad stuff out, good stuff in. And I don't want to be all, you know, talking baby talk here, but really, that's what it amounts to. The bad stuff out, the good stuff in. Drugs count as the bad stuff, by the way. They're not the good stuff. The good stuff is the nutrition. Because ultimately, it's all about the cell, and the cell doesn't eat drugs. It eats vitamins. It eats minerals. It eats uh, essential fatty acids. It eats essential amino acids. The cell has a menu from which it eats from, and there aren't, there's no drugs on the menu. Drugs can only muck things up, period. The pharmacological model, the pharmacomedical model of healthcare doesn't work for health. It doesn't work for health. I don't know how many different ways to say it. It doesn't work for health. It works for controlling symptoms sometimes forcing or compelling the body to be asymptomatic, to be without symptoms. It works for lowering your test scores. It'll lower your cholesterol scores, but it doesn't work for health. We've allowed the, the criteria for health to become numbers, not how we feel. 
we've allowed the criteria for health to be eliminating uh, symptoms, but not cleanly eliminating symptoms, but forcing the body to eliminate symptoms, shutting things down, suppressing, blocking, inhibiting, antiing. So cortisol was discovered in the 1930s. They were the, the early part of the 20th century was when well, they first discovered hormones at the turn of the 19, at the turn of the 20th century, like the 1890s or so. They got this idea that there's these chemicals in the body that in secreted in tiny little amounts will cause things to happen. Hormone means I cause to action in Latin. So they found these chemicals that would cause the muscles to move or the nerves to fire. This was a major, major advance in medicine. Nobel Prize, a Nobel Prize was won for the first guy. I forgot his name. Starling was his first name, I believe. And uh, he won a Nobel Prize for this idea of hormones. And so the early part of the 20th century, they were just getting going, getting going with hormones and the discovery of hormones. They hadn't gotten into vitamins yet and, and nutrients. Sort of along the same line, around the same time. Hormones got big, 1890s, 1900s, 19, up all the way up to the 1940s or so. It was the, the, really the beginnings of the golden age of hormones. Nutrition was a little uh, along the same time, but a little bit later. Nutrition started probably in the 1920s. Anyway, uh, by the 1930s, they had, were, had isolated the substance that was, they found that if they stuck it in animals who didn't have an adrenal gland, they found that the animals could, uh, would live longer without an adrenal gland if they gave them this chemical. And so this discovery that there was a chemical that could protect the adrenal glands or that could replace the adrenal glands uh, stimulated all this research. And by the 1940s, they discovered this, they, they had isolated this stuff and, and they had synthesized the stuff. They call it substance E. And substance E began to show up in various laboratories and research laboratories and clinical, pl clinical facilities and even in the marketplace. And of course, substance E is cortisol. And cortisol, despite its very well-deserved reputation as a toxic substance with, or I should say potentially toxic substance with a laundry list of side effects that involve every single system in the human body, bar none, every, every single organ, every single system, every single tissue is going to be affected by cortisol and in the long run negatively affected by cortisol. Uh, doctors, we knew this right away. Doctors knew this right away. They knew, they knew it, had a, it was a potential problem. Nonetheless, almost as soon as it was released to the public, on the public, it became a mainstay because it was so, so effective at reducing inflammation. It is the quintessential biochemical of anti-inflammation in the body. And that makes it the ideal candidate for a drug because all disease has inflammation behind it. So instead of asking what is the inflammatory response due to, we suppress it. Just think about that. That says it all in a nutshell. Instead of asking what is this inflammatory response, the disease-causing response due to, we say how can we suppress it? How can we shut it down? And that's the drug model in a nutshell. And that is why, if you understand that whole dilemma or that whole, that whole conflict between uh, figuring out what the offending agent is and just telling the immune system to shut down, you, you can see why the medical model, the pharmaco medical model, cannot help but be a failure. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this on The Bright Side. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, and we have lots of lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, cortisol issues, if you want to know how to lower your cortisol, we're going to talk about that in a couple of days. Uh, probably tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about strategies for uh, not just for lowering cortisol, but what you can do if you're on prednisone. You know, if you're on prednisone, there are some uh, defensive tactics that you can take that can help mitigate some of the problems associated with prednisone. And if you are on prednisone, you definitely don't want to be on it long term, although I know a lot of folks are. And you definitely want to wean yourself off gradually with your doctor. You don't want to just stop taking your prednisone. When the body is, when you're taking prednisone or, or steroids for a, long period, for a long period of time, the body adjusts. And if you just stop taking it, the body doesn't have a chance to recalibrate, readjust itself. You can cause all kinds of issues. So if you're going to wean yourself off your pred, or, or you want to get off your prednisone, wean yourself off of it and do it with a healthcare professional, preferably the guy who prescribed it, paying close attention to you. 
Okay, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number from uh, the journal Scientific Reports. In wine, there's health. Low levels of alcohol are actually good for the brain. A couple of glasses of wine can help clear the mind after a busy day. New research shows that it, they actually help clean the mind as well. Low levels of alcohol, apparently, tamp down inflammation and help the brain clear away toxins, including those associated with Alzheimer's disease. The brain has its own toxic toxin-clearing system. It has its own lymphatic system. And by the way, this is something, a couple things. We're going to talk about the lymphatic system here later on because there's a relationship between cortisol and the lymphatic system, and we don't talk anywhere near enough about the lymph. You never hear about this poor, uh, poor underappreciated system in the body, the lymphatic system. Unbelievably important. Delivers vitamins, delivers uh, fatty acids, hormones, clears out toxins. It was, it's only been known not that long, maybe 10 years or so, 5, 10 years. Uh, very recently, did we discovered that the brain has its own lymphatic system. It has its own toxin clearance system. When we are toxic, or when our brain is toxic, when our brain is sick, whether it's Bell's palsy or whether it's dementia or whether it's Parkinson's disease, whatever the brain disease, you can rest assured you've got a toxic brain lymph. You've got brain a brain inflammation cellular brain cell inflammation this is so important because we get off on all the different ways the brain can f can fall apart all the different disease states but they're all the same thing and as it turns out low levels of alcohol can help clean out low levels that's the key low levels and where that point is between low levels and high levels i don't know and that's tricky but it's certainly not a lot so low levels of alcohol can help clean out the lymph the glymphatic system, the G, the glymphatic system is what this uh, brain lymphatic system is called. And it shows how uh, the study, uh, this research shows how uh, alcohol can help flush away the amyloid, so-called amyloid fibers that can accumulate in the brain and in the lymph when you have Alzheimer's disease or other, other dementias. This lymphatic system, by the way, the glymphatic system is uh, kicks in when we sleep and this is one of the major not only is this is one of the major reasons for the importance of sleep it may actually be the reason for sleep at least according to some researchers it's kind of a mystery why we need to sleep but a lot of researchers believe or some researchers anyway believe that when we sleep we uh, activate the glymphatic system. We help improve clearance of brain toxins. Brain toxins can accumulate under conditions of chronic inflammation, under conditions of trauma, stroke. By the way, exercise is also a great way to improve glymphatic circulation. There's lots of ways to improve the, the movement of the glymph and the lymph. The, the, the glymph and the lymph have to move, but they don't have a pump. There's no, there's no real pushing or, or propulsion system to push the fluid and the lymph has to move. If the lymph doesn't move, it begins to pool, and that's where we, that is when we become sick. Just like all disease has inflammation behind it, all disease has some kind of lymphatic toxicity behind it as well. I call it dirty blood. The blood and the lymph are kind of, the, in a way, they're this, they intermingle with each other, so in a way, they're the circulatory system, so I, I kind of simplistically call it dirty blood, but you could call it dirty lymph and dirty blood, dirty circulation. I like the way it sounds, dirty blood sounds, so I use that term, but it's really dirty lymph and dirty blood. They're behind everything. Inflammation's behind everything. Cell disease is behind everything. Dirty blood is behind everything. There are these, these features that are behind all, they're all related, of course, but behind all health challenges. The cells break down, you get inflammation. Inflammation causes sluggishness. This is disease. And there's no drugs that can help. There's no surgical procedure that can help. But it's so simple once you understand it. It's, it's plumbing. It's basically fluid dynamics. That's what scientists call it, fluid dynamics, how fluid moves. Inflammation dis disturbs fluid dynamics. Cell death causes inflammation. Once fluid dynamics is thrown off, once the, the fluid becomes sluggish, you don't generate the electricity you need to because the fluid movement generates an electrical charge. And you don't deliver nutrients and oxygen, and you don't remove toxins as well from the cells, which leads to more cell disturbances, which leads to more inflammation, which leads to more dirty blood and dirty, circu uh, dirty circulation, and, and then more cell, de cell death and disruption, and more 
um, uh, uh, inflammatory response and more dirty blood and dirty circulation, etc. That's it. And there's nothing else, folks. It's just those three things there. Dirty blood, dirty circulation, dying cells, and uh, inf- inflammation. Dying cells, inflammation, dirty circulation, leading to more dying cells, inflammation, and more dirty circulation, leading to more dying cells, leading to more inflammation, leading to more dirty circulation, and on and on and on it goes. And when it starts off, it's only one cell, two cells, three cells, 10 cells, 100 cells. But it gets worse over time. It adds up. And then you're sitting on the couch watching TV, and all of a sudden you go, oh, my God, my arm. Or, oh, I got, uh, uh, my body hurts. Well, you reach the tipping point. You reach the critical mass. It's not like all of a sudden something happened. It's like it's been building up gradually. And what causes it to build up? Attack. Inflammation is attack. The attack comes in from food. The attack comes in from a negative attack, if you will, from a lack of nutrition. It's basically that's it. Oxygen, of course, is involved. And then the first three dimensions of the healing process, spiritual, mental, and emotional issues, those are definitely involved. But a huge amount of it is a lack of nutrition, the wrong stuff, the right stuff not getting in, and the wrong stuff getting in, especially sugar, by the way. That counts as the wrong stuff. All right, 844 is our number. We do have lines open for you on the bright side. Let's go to Idaho and say good morning to, oh, shoot, Shauna, call back. I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that, Shauna. You've been holding on a while. So a callback, we'll get you right up. We, we, actually, we've got to take a break. So Shauna, call back, and we'll get you right up uh, when we come back from our break. You guys, this is not complicated. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, if you have questions about the longevity business, if you have questions or comments about our truth treatment products, I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you've used our truth treatment products in the last uh, two, two and a half years, going on three years that we've had them out, and you have uh, results you want to report or review, I'd love to hear it. We're getting all kinds of, now that the product's been out two and a half years, there's a lot of people using our truth treatment products and the letters we get, the testimonials we get are over the top. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and also Ben Fuchs Archive and benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase your favorite longevity products off our website. It's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interest, interested in joining the Brightside Ben team, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee right off the website. It's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470 for more info. Our number today, 866-735-2470. I'm sorry, 866-236. 844-236-6010. 844 844- 236-6010. Let's go to Shauna. Make sure I do this right here. Hey, Shauna, good morning. Good morning. What's going on? Me? I hear you loud and clear. Hey. What's up? All right. It's good to know you make mistakes, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I make more than my share, that's for sure. The more You, you know what, Shauna? The, the more you're doing, the more mistakes you're going to make. So if you're not making... Isn't that true? Right? If you're not making a lot of mistakes, yeah. you're not doing enough stuff. So that's just how it goes. Mistakes so in we action. Put you up there as no, the don't, oldest. don't. I know, because <laughs> then you fall harder when you fall. But yeah, you I don't want it. that. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> no, I never present. You know, all the information I give you is not in the way of preaching or proselytizing. It's just chemistry, and it's just I options. Know, it's so amazing. <laughs> no judgment. Sure. This is not about judgment. It's just about chemistry. And if you're sick, you have options. Period. I don't want anybody to hold me on a pedestal. Don't hold me but on we a do pedestal. For don't. The, no. <laughs> It. Okay, for you're, sharing it. At least okay. you're able to open your mouth and share it. So that's okay. awesome. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. So What's going my on? My brother has um, a skin cancer on his nose, and okay. they took it off and said it was skin, and so now they want to remove more and put okay, ear of course. replacement there. Because if you see like, the skin, no. the skin is so de- it's so uh, dece- deceiving. The skin is deceiving because we know inside the body 
that if you have cancer inside the body, that it has something to do with the milieu inside the body. But we never think about that with the skin, so we blame external forces. Do you follow me with this? Like uh -huh. in this, inside the body, it's kind of an intuition. Okay, if you have cancer inside the body, there must be something inside the body that's gone wrong, right? But we never think about that with the skin. We instantly blame the sun. Or we instantly think taking it off is the, is the answer. And then we're shocked when it comes back again. Cancer yeah. on the skin, you, we got to begin to look at it as the, in the same way as we look as can, at cancer inside the body. It's just happening on the skin. It's a cancer of the system. It's a cancer of the cell, first of all, and the cell is responsive to the system, the system being the body. So cancer, skin cancer is caused by the same thing that causes other cancers, although you have the added factor of the sun, probably. But really, you've got to look at all the internal issues. Cancer is a sign that some cell group is not getting its needs met. Does that make sense? The, yeah. the way a cancer cell divides is a classic case of a cell being, just being, becoming desperate and of not knowing what else to do because it's so bombarded with toxicity and it's so deficient in nutrients. So it just doesn't know what to do, so it divides really rapidly. And this rapid division is, a, is a, a, a stress management technique. It's a management technique the way we have management techniques as organisms, as bodies. A cell has management techniques. And when it's at its wit's end, it will become desperate. And it will s start to divide very rapidly, not paying attention to its neighbors. It will just care about itself. It becomes sociopathic. And at that point, it's very difficult to stop the process unless you take care of the problem. So you, you can have your tumors removed. That's great. I, and you may need it. I'm not saying not to do it. But that's, what the heck is that, <laughs> Sean? Sorry, it's my rooster. <laughs> I've got kids in the house and roosters outside. So. Okay, well, just don't mix <laughs> it up and put the roosters quieted. inside and the kids outside. <laughs> All right, anyway. Um, so you got to work on the inside of the body. That means nutrition number one, pound the nutrients, pound them. No, and concentrated foods, low calorie, but con this is the same thing everybody has to do, by the way. This is not unique to anybody who has cancer, but it's extremely important if you have cancer. You want to keep the calories down, but the nutrients up. So calorie restriction, optimum nutrition, cron diet, uh, calories down, uh, nutrients up, and you do that with supplements and with nutrient-dense foods, algaes, vegetables, um, uh, whey protein, if you can handle whey protein and it's clean and organic, well, you got to be careful with whey. Sa eggs also are powerful, powerful, nutritionally dense foods. Um, a bone soup, bone broth protein, also nutritionally dense. I'd be using aloe vera. Use your Fucoid Z from Longevity. Make sure you're using the entire Healthy Start Pack. Make sure you're uh, taking extra Ultimate Selenium, which is wonderful for helping the body deal with cancer. I'd be doing high doses of vitamin C in addition to the stuff you're getting from the, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, keeping your sugar down. It is nothing you have not heard me say every single day, multiple yeah. times a day on this program. You understand? There's no yes. magical yes. thing. If you hear somebody on a radio show, and I hear them all the time telling you about this magical thing that kills cancer, hogwash. There's lots of things that kill cancer, by the way. But the idea of killing cancer, whether it's chemotherapy or with the magical herb, it, that's, not the, that's not the answer. Because the cancer is just going to come back. It, even if it does any, and that's assuming it does anything. If it does something, the cancer is going to come back if you don't address the soil. The soil, the soil, the soil. It's about the soil, which means the, what the tree is growing in, what the cancer tree is growing in. I want to get one more call in, Sean. Is that okay? Did I help you out? Oh, yeah, you did. How do you, okay. I mean, they have this fear factor. So well, how do you, I, you know, that? that's, that's, what, that's it. What's fear stand for? Do you know what F-E-A-R stands for? Um, tell me. False evidence appearing real. Real, okay. False evidence appearing right. real, well, okay? I'm on your website and see if there's more info to give them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, Sean. Have a good day. Okay. Okay. I'm not saying there's not times to be afraid, by the way. You can, you can be in quick fear. That's what the fight or flight response is about, quick fear. But long-term fear is always about the past and the future, which do not exist. Thus, they are illusory. False evidence appearing real. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Dan in Minnesota. Good morning, Dan. Morning. Good morning. What's up? Um, question for you on uh, OCD. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I know it well. My dad had OCD. Uh, it's, okay. it's, it can drive you nuts. Is it for you or somebody else? Somebody you know? Well, it, it's for anybody out there that needs it. Oh, yeah, anybody. Okay, good. That's a great question. O 
OCD is kind of on the edge of physiologic and psychologic. You know, everything has a psychological component. All health challenges have a psychological component, which we always talk about. Uh, but there's this, when it comes to mental health issues, depression, OCD, a PTSD, this, the mental and emotional aspects are, are really much more significant and dramatic. And so I'm always hesitant to use strictly nutritional strategies for things like for emotional problems, or mental slash emotional or psychological, whatever term you want to use, issues. OCD usually involves a control issue. It's a way people have of controlling chaotic. It's a way we learn to control chaotic situations at a young age. Almost everybody who had OCD had some kind of chaos that they were trying to deal with at a young age. We all have a certain degree of chaos. But for whatever reason, when you have OCD, you learn this coping strategy. You know, we're all coping. Everybody's coping with life. It's uncertain. Nobody knows what's up. But some people learn these kinds of coping strategies, which help when you're a kid. You know, they won't step on cracks. You ever hear that? You know, kids who don't step on cracks when, you, when they're walking down the street. And there's all kinds of weird ways you can obsess. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, hand washing and door, door, clo uh, door locking and checking the stove and all kinds of weird things like that. It represents a control of thing. So you got to deal with the chaos in some kind of, of life. And maybe in the chaos of your childhood, in some kind of productive way. I'm not going to, that's all I'm going to say about that. From a nutritional standpoint, keep your sugar stable for all health issues. You want your blood sugar stable, stable, stable. That means no foods that spike your sugar. Secondly, if you have any digestive issues, you've got to address those. Leaky gut and the, uh, the uh, entrance of bacterial byproducts, chunks of bacteria, bacteria themselves, or, uh, or, or bacterial gases into the bloodstream can cause a stress response. You've got to calm, the, you got to reduce the stress response. OCD is a sign of an elevated stress response. So you've got to keep the stress response controlled. You do it with food, you do it with sugar, you do it with things like deep breathing, relaxation strategies, and from a nutritional standpoint, things that can help antagonize cortisol, balance out cortisol, things like vitamin E and vitamin A, also essential fatty acids, pregnenolone, it's a hormone that can help balance out cortisol, pregnenolone, P-R-E-G-N-E-N-O-L-O-N-E. -E -E. um, you want to make sure that you're having reg regular bowel movements because a lot of these stress hormones are eliminated in the bowel, moving your body. These are all wonderful ways to deal with all mental health issues, including OCD. Dan, that's the music, and I'm out of time, buddy. Hope we helped you out. And uh, thanks for your call in Minnesota. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out our websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our retinol, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.